And a good Saturday afternoon to you. Roger Hill of Weathering Heights, Velco Weather Hazards Forecaster. This weather video is driven by 802cars.com. They represent 802 Toy Toyota, Twin City Subaru, 802 Honda, all located off of Exit 7 on Interstate 89. Looking at the big picture currently right now with a little bit of shower activity across some, some parts of northern Vermont there. Fairly light stuff. Looking at dew point temperatures, relatively comfortable out there. We have no real issues for wind gusts and uh, just a lot of cloudy skies and unfortunately uh, some of that fairly opaque type clouds uh, making for rather dreary conditions on this Saturday midday. Uh, there is some slight hints of sunshine that'll kind of work across some parts of Vermont but for the most part we're looking at the showers hanging tough across the northern part of the state today. Let's take a look at the bigger picture here showing a uh, tropical storm Ida now category one hurricane expected to spin up to a two three and even a four at landfall and then fairly quickly weaken to a tropical storm and eventually a depression a lot of this moisture will curl like this and dump off the middle atlantic coast or northeast coast maybe around new jersey and it could refire as a tropical system but it would stay out to sea and to our south so so no immediate threats and even in the longer range i don't see any real threats from ida in terms of temperatures you can see where the warm air is uh, a lot of sunshine as well, and we have kind of a what we call baroclinic zone, sort of dividing colder air from warmer air and where frontal boundaries set up, and indeed areas of low pressure. And a lot of weak disturbances will be working along the U.S.-Canadian border coming at us like this, and kind of working around the periphery of the moisture and of the heat and humidity associated with the uh, typical Bermuda high. Let's take a look at the incrementals, and first we're going to look at temperatures. So currently what we have here is uh, we're on the edge of some warmer air that's kind of working in and a little bit of cooler air. This is valid at uh, 2 o'clock this Saturday afternoon. And you can see that warmer air kind of pushes in and it's going to be centered more on Sunday and into Monday. And we have a fairly intense area of low pressure to the northeast of uh, James Bay and Hudson Bay. And this is going to sling a cold front through the region and power up some shower and thunderstorm activity. Uh, right now it does not look like a giant threat, but needless to say it's a kind of an active warm front that will increase the humidity levels. And those, some of those humidity levels will be... Um, be supported by dew point temperatures 65 to 70 degrees so uh, fairly moist conditions and we do have some interaction with that frontal zone and of course a little bit stronger shear aloft but for the most part we're looking at some potential for some strong thunderstorms at this point that would take place on Monday and uh, that's going to be the main concern for utilities for this entire period which goes through about 2 a.m. next Friday morning. Taking a look at the incrementals here though, uh, we can see that the cooler air is going to start to filter in. This is valid by uh, Tuesday overnight, Tuesday morning, and into the day on Wednesday for some cooler weather for later in the week. And that kind of continues until we get a little bit of a warm up next weekend toward next Sunday, and then followed by more cool weather. And the overall regime is starting to look a little bit cooler, uh, kind of early autumn weather pattern if you will going into the first and second week of September uh, with this kind of a setup and just to carry that through this is through the 9th you can kind of see that uh, the prevailing flow is going to be more or less out of the west along the US Canadian border. An incremental European model centered on Vermont here you can also follow the progress of what will be Hurricane Ida with a major landfall category 4 hurricane potential uh, coming ashore Louisiana. So this is valid uh, this evening at about uh, 6 o'clock and you can see that we have generally dry weather uh, that's been pushed up primarily to the north but during the overnight period some sort of flirtatious uh, showers right along the northern tier regions. When we get into Sunday morning we'll see a little bit of that shower activity work into the northern and western part of the state but it stays primarily right along the U.S. Canadian border and that's going to be the area that's going to be most affected. Here we have land falling uh, Hurricane Ida and kind of keeping an eye on uh, Vermont. We do dry out for, for Monday at least uh, into the overnight period Sunday night into Monday morning before that cold front works on through and you can easily see that here. That's going to connect up with some of that moisture which from Ida is going to roll over parts of Tennessee, the Tennessee Valley a little bit of the Ohio River Valley and then kind of dump offshore. So continuing that, we got good weather here for basically Tuesday, but there'll be a little bit of a shower flare up. You can kind of see a secondary frontal boundary right across the uh, central parts of the state on Tuesday. And then Wednesday, another weather system will work on through. 
it's fairly weak before Thursday we finally get sort of in between weather systems but you will notice that we have a lot of moisture streaming across southern parts of New England as the leftovers or remnants of Ida begin to push on through and that should set us up for uh, for Friday into Saturday and you can see that Saturday we have a little bit of shower activity and then along about uh, Sunday it looks like we have dry weather going through most of Sunday until fairly late in the day so Labor Day weekend starting to look like uh, we have some possibilities at least for some uh, potential days there that might be uh, dry project weather uh, just beyond the period and just continuing that into Monday Labor Day a front goes through and then it does look like we have better conditions at that point in time but we're starting to see kind of a some signs of an early fall kind of weather pattern uh, across Canada and that's going to be the controlling influence on our weather here looking at the Jeff's model or the uh, GFS ensemble now it's still uh, still available uh, we're looking at just again a little bit of light rain shower activity this overall period we're looking at generally dry weather but uh, sort of sporadic chatter if you will almost in the noise and then uh, the total of course QPF which you just saw earlier is not very much we jump up maybe three tenths of an inch and then uh, late in the period and really beyond uh, we're looking at uh, maybe almost one half of an inch weather prediction center shows exactly the same thing this would be Ida's moisture you can see how it comes inland here through uh, mainly uh, eastern Miss uh, eastern Louisiana all of Mississippi parts of Alabama Georgia and you can see how it curls out into the middle Atlantic states with a drier area in between the sort of storm tracks another one up here in the upper Midwest into parts of Canada but we're kind of in between that two meter temperature regime is uh, very much in agreement so uh, we're gonna look at dew points here and moisture this is the warmest days to come that would be on your Sunday and into Monday we also will look at the precipitable water which should illustrate very similar and then a big time drop off this is going to be a major sharp kind of cold front here that's going to produce much drier conditions working on in now out ahead of that we have one big day for capes and of course that lands on Monday afternoon that's the most significant in terms of uh, shower and thunderstorm activity when you put it together you're looking at shear that might be uh, making a run but probably after the fact getting into the 30s and above 40 knots uh, shear and switching over to temperatures the meteorological output statistics show us uh, this period for the next five afternoons of high temperatures we're running a little bit above normal by around three degrees and uh, we should be seeing those temperatures increase a little bit more weighted somewhere around three to six degrees overall as we ramp up the tropical aspects here we peak of course September the 10th uh, the main story here is uh, Hurricane Ida, and then we have a 60% chance of a tropical storm, tropical cyclone developing uh, that will be basically working its way out. And then we have Tropical Depression number 10, and this is also going to be heading north and out to sea. So a lot of uh, westward movement, the only thing we have to deal with is going to be Ida for a little time. And in the five-day graphics, uh, pretty much the same thing as I just showed. Tropical cyclone tracks, uh, the 51 member European ensemble looks like this. So looking at Ida, the uh, main feature here, uh, all eyes of course, all attention will be turned to that. No worries here, and no worries uh, coming off the West African coast, so that's looking pretty good. Uh, this system again east of Bermuda is going to go in toward Europe. And so as we run the computer modeling, you can kind of see the, the uh, tracks here with a lot of the remnants and note the temp the uh, uh, maximum winds here 40 to 50 knots indicated potentially by a few of the members of the European ensemble going off the southeast coast that would be the only thing we'll have to watch and again this is going to be uh, just going back that's going to be valid we're not talking about this uh, any kind of a worry here until along about after this period Friday uh, on the 3rd and probably more like uh, Saturday or Sunday. So Labor Day weekend, we might see the passage of the remnants of Ida just scoot down the uh, just a little bit south of the uh, Long Island and uh, New England coast. Some of that rain uh, could make for a little bit of a, an issue if it gets a little bit further north, but something we'll be watching around the corner. That's it from here. Roger Hill, Weathering Heights. Thanks for watching.